yeah. I didn't expect it. So as we get down, I thought, ah, I've done it. I've done it once. Done the three peaks. It's nice. The day after, I was in absolute agony. I took paracetamol, neurofin, all that sort of stuff. But in my head, I thought, actually, yeah, I like that pain. Yeah, I like that There's sacrifice. There's something about it. Yeah, you, you, you've, some of the horrible bits you tend to forget about, mm. don't you? And, yeah. You know, the, the journey. I enjoyed the pain. Yeah, the journey is is amazing. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, you're always going to get pain at some mm. point, aren't you, during mm. events, but. I think you just learn how to ride through that really mm. to be honest you know it's gonna hurt at some point and but that it. makes it rewarding almost yeah, it doesn't does. it the yeah. pain is the bit that you when i'm going up when i i mean i've started going up snowdon i'm gonna go up elbrus in russia yeah. we're gonna try and raise money for charity yeah because it's something that i can do at my age you know i yeah. can't play football and i'm a bit getting a bit old for football and obviously so. with your client base and your followers yeah. and stuff you can get and businesses yeah. to back you you it's can make tra- great money yeah. for you know your favorite charity it's mm-hmm. fantastic which is what know. i'm looking forward to doing i'm yeah. you know to be able to do that and to be able to travel to places like russia um, yeah. which i'd never have gone to before no it's you know it's a hobby that does you good i enjoy it yeah. i can raise money and i can go see the world which is kind of what i want to do but yeah well, as yeah. we were going up snowdon um we went to wales that pain barrier hit again yes and i got to the top and I remember coming back down again, and then afterwards, I didn't enjoy being at the top, but I enjoyed the pain going up it because I yeah. thought I was going to give up. And it's something in my head, maybe similar to what you go through when you're doing your cycling. Yeah, is how do you control that pain of mm. not giving up? How and, and it's almost like a mind train thing for me. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and um, and I think I think that's the difference, really. I mean, I've I've not become a a British champion or a world champion out of it. I think I've helped a lot of people out with, with yeah. the fundraising, but the rewards you get yourself, you know, mm. because of the improvements you've seen in yourself, mm. is mentally rewarding, isn't yeah. it? It's, it's, it's just... The journey is always yeah, better journey, than the finish. Yeah, yeah you know, it is. Even the journey of, like, my business. Yeah, that's true, yeah. You know, I've got a shop. You did the opening for the shop. Yeah. Everything yeah. there, and I thought, wow, this is really, really good. And I really, really were proud of what I've achieved in a short space of time, but the pain of getting to that point yeah. is almost the bit that I only remember now. Yeah, you know that's what true. I mean? Yeah, you know the tough times sometimes. Yeah. Think, are we going to make it? Are we? Yeah. You know, we're going to run out of funds. Or, you know, yeah, completely. Are these people going to pay or whatever? And, I, and I've got a friend who and he says that there's not everybody can. It doesn't mean that people are worse or better than you, but there's a certain mentality that almost gets off on that yeah some people can't deal with that can't handle it no not at all no but they can't sleep one night yeah with it. but there's almost some people that use it to drive them forwards yeah and i think that's probably what i do is yeah i, I kind of like i say i'm impulsive so i just go right i'm going to do it yeah in fact when i set my company up i went to an accountant i'll just tell you this story quickly and i think he thought i was a joke because <gasps> <laughs> he was like where's your business plan where's what's going to make you different and i just went i'm, I'm i went I'm Dan Pierce. I, I just know I can make sales. <laughs> I didn't really know what else to say to him. Nice so one. he walks. I walk, I walk out of this office, and I thought, "Do you know what?" He, in my head, if he wasn't wrong, he's still my accountant today. Yeah. But I thought he didn't believe me. Yeah. And I almost went, "I'll show yeah, you." Yeah, I'll show you. Yeah, and that's I'll come the difference, back and yeah. I'll do it. And just to see his face, and he went, "Bloody hell!" I went, "There you go." That's the drive, isn't it? And it was the that's drive. The drive. It, we're almost something. someone saying, "You can't do this." Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, go, if someone says I can't do it, I think, right, yeah. it's there. I almost need that. Yeah, you so do. that negativity, I don't think, oh, they're a bad person because they've been negative towards no, me. No, I just turn around and think. That gives you the push. I need that. Thanks yeah, for that. You do, Thanks yeah. for being negative. I don't mind yeah. it. You don't, yeah. I don't look at people and think, oh, he's a bad person because they've been negative. I just kind of, you've got to harness that energy. It's just how they are, it? It's just how mm-hmm. they are. You've they're got not, to harness it like out. you. You know, I'd I'd send people in sport when I you know took triathlon. They'd say, yeah, you know, he'll, he'll never he'll never make it. You know, he'll never <laughs> yeah. do all, you know, and people that were a lot better runners than me. Yeah. I mean, really good runners. People that got they got sent an entry for London. They didn't have to mm. qualify or, or apply for it. Mm. You know, they were doing two and a half hour marathon runs. You know, and they they thought they'd beat me at triathlon. I ended up beating mm. some of these top runners because it's not it wasn't just about the run. It was about the combined three yeah you know so if i could get far enough in front of them on the swim and the bike they ain't mm. going to touch me in the run anyway mm. if i run it half an hour slower than them so that will this like you say it's this mm. mentality it's a trigger in your brain isn't there yeah. but you need it if and, someone goes and that was the that was the thing that was just pushing you down the mm. road you know 
Um, yeah, it's just mm. an amazing experience. What made you give up then? What was it? Was it? Uh, well, it was partly to do with the the, the, the singing. You know, when mm. when obviously the singing started to to come in, and I think I'd done that many years at it, and I'm getting towards you know, uh, sort of beyond 35 anyway, you know, <laughs> yeah. I think I'm about 37 then, uh, yeah. doing Ironman or just finishing it. We finished off with two final events of cycling from Morley to Siegen, you know, Morley's mm. uh, twin town in Germany. I did that on my own when it, with just a map. Just talk uh, me through that just quickly. If you yeah, that mind. was just like, I just set off outside Morley spots. My, my daughters were racing it over there, Morley, Siegen, were racing each other. They'd traveled over there in a coach. So I just said, oh, I'll, I'll bike over, you know, from Mali, and I'll see you there. What so does I, your wife think to it when, to when you're doing these things? Does she, do, does she just go, She okay, just thought then, I'm mad. go, you're mental. She's just like, you know, why, why? <laughs> well, it was usually, why? <laughs> yeah, what, what, was your, what was your answer? What are you going to get out of it? You know what I mean? And, and it was like, it was just, just, just crazy. But I just said, because I can. Mm. <laughs> You know, and, and, and it's just something different, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I'll get, like I say, I'll get towards the back end of my racing career. So mm -hmm. I just needed something to, to go for again. And, and that, that seemed like a good thing to do. So I did that in four days. And then a, a, a friend of mine uh, w just suggested, why don't we do uh, Land's End John of Oates, 900 mile. You know, I've ne never done anything as, as long as that. They said, we'll do it in a week. We'll do it in a week, easy. And, uh, you know, we'll just put some training rides in, we'll just do it. So yeah, okay then, put my name down for that. We've got loads of business sponsors. We right. had them all, they printed all over the tops. And, Brilliant. And, uh, and the newspapers were all over it. And, uh, you know, that bit is fantastic as well. You it's know, exciting, you get, isn't you it? You get a big kick out of that, yeah. that makes you train harder. And, uh, and, you know, a couple of friends got involved as backup vehicles. Uh, somebody lent us a van that we could use, all petrol paid for. Drove us down to Land's End, dropped us off. There you go, you know, and, uh, we, and we did 150 miles a day for six days, and we got we got there, and we were great, you know. We were, Some going that into We it. were stopping at a pub every night. We were, have, we were having, a, you know, say a set three-course meal and about four pints. <laughs> and then getting a Chinese on the way back to the, <laughs> to the hotel. Yeah. Honestly, Brilliant. we were absolutely just eating mm. anything, like mm. real. Anybody left anything, it would you just be You just because you were burning calories that yeah, much. Yeah, 10,000 more a day, just burning it. You could eat anything and would just... Mm, were you eating store. whilst you were racing or were you just yeah, eating at the yeah. end? So you'd some have of bars. the backup guys would meet us you know, after 40 mile, they'd yeah. been to some sandwich shop and just throw a lot of stuff at us. Then they'd disappear up the road. They weren't following us, no. they just left us. Yeah. And um, No uh, no PS, no, 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 just roadmaps. Yeah, just roadmaps. And uh, like we, as I said earlier to you, you know, we went wrong a few times. But uh, what an amazing reward that was when we finished. Uh, in John O'Groats and we knew we'd raised all this money again we, we, we got in the van drove to Avermore which I'd never been in my life anyway so you've seen all these places that you've never mm. seen before and just had a party you know at the you know resort the there we just absolutely like knock, knock out and the, what was the knockout. reason you wanted to do just because you had to raise money or achievement yeah yeah the, the, the money bit is always a, a, a big drive for for it might be just a particular charity at the time that you've mm. got an interest in you know or, or a friend who's you know he's, he's got he's got you know uh, i had a friend at that time who had a, uh, he needed a bypass you know she started raising money for heart research mm -hmm. And, uh, and like I said, people were just throwing money at you. If I wasn't doing an event, people would say, you know what, you've got coming up next. You think, God, I better think of something, you know, because they, they literally want to give you yeah. money. There's an element Once you of, get in that flow, yeah. it's not like, oh, oh shit, we're going to have to sponsor him again. Mm. People, people actually want to give to, you know, yeah. they know it's going to the charity. They know it's going to a good to cause. To a good cause. It's, it's Phil Fryer. Yeah, you know, it's, 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 it's absolutely fantastic. And mm. I got such a kick out of doing it. And then after that, um, managing John O'Groats, the lad who I did it with, a guy called Richard Braley, sadly he died last year of a, of a, um, a heart defect, which is, you know, he's only 58 as well. I was fit as hell at the time when we did this event. Well, he sang karaoke and you looked at him, it looked like, it looked like if you said good morning, he'd pull your head off. You know, <laughs> it was like proper light, yeah. muscle, muscle on muscle, shaved head. And, uh, but a great character, real great character that could sing 
like Matt Munro, you know, some real old crooner stuff, mm. well beyond our years, more our parents' uh, music. But I used to think, my God, it must be great to be able to sing like that. Just watch him think, mm. you know, he'd get up and people sort of laugh at him as they were getting up at karaoke thinking, yeah, what's he going to do? You know, I mean, this will be a laugh. And he just nailed Bell it. Bell tune. Nail it. Is that what made you, because obviously we've, we, you, you've gone from barbers to Iron Man, yeah. raising monies, and then all of a sudden you're at the end of that career. It's like, what's next for, yeah, for I Phil? Didn't, I didn't plan it to happen. It just just seemed to be like the next step. You know, it was like, ah, mm. oh, I like this. You know, mm. I like it. I'm not saying I can sing at the time because I, mm. I don't think I could. I didn't know how to deliver. the Because obviously every song is a story and I didn't know how to deliver. Anybody could get up and sing the song. Mm. But how Richard did it, it was just amazing, really. It was like it, his story. They were mm. telling you over the mic. And, uh, and, I, and I just got this thing, I thought, well, this is amazing. And uh, after a few, few of these, you know, each week I'd have another go, I was singing Boys Own and, and Westlife and all kinds of sort of, uh, great songs didn't suit me whatsoever. I was murdering them all. And I thought, okay, well, I'll have a go at some of the old school stuff like, like Richard's mm. doing. And I started to look at back catalog like uh, Dean Martin and mm. Nat King Cole and Sinatra came into it and for some reason the the Sinatra just just like really worked for me you know it was just just incredible um, so you kind of got you'd found your groove I'd, yeah I'd you'd found been some a few times with the oh. boys on because people could easily be put off by oh, that yeah go, people are like you know all. giving it all that so sort of when you when you when you're halfway through the song you know mm. and you've got to die for another minute and a half and uh, yeah, I honestly, honestly, I dug a few holes, you know. During was that more nerve wracking than doing the triathletes? Oh, or? big style because you, you, you know, you, people are just sat there watching you. Mm. So different from all of you doing the same event. Mm. And um, yeah, it, and and as a kid, I was never that person that would get up and like look at me. You know, I'm a singer, yeah. I'm a performer. Never did any of that. Mm. Any performing to do, I'd, I'd like disappear or any speaking to do at school mm. or anything like that. No, 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 he'll do it. I ain't doing it. Mm. So I, I wasn't that type of person whatsoever. So that took a lot of doing for me to get up a lot. Uh, well, a few beers to start with. Mm -hmm. And then now I don't even touch a, a drink when I'm, when I'm singing. Performing. Yeah. And, uh, and it, just week after week, mm. I got into it more, go home, study it. There's a guy there. Do you remember uh, a guy called Alan Kenny or a DJ at JD's in Morley? JD's, a small snooker centre. I can remember the JD's, the snooker centre. Yeah. Because there was a bar called Winners. Yes, that's right. And it was Joe Johnson's, wasn't it? Yeah, Joe Johnson's sweet. I well, don't remember the there. Right, okay. And uh, Alan yeah. put this karaoke competition on mm. over 20 weeks. I mean, so that's some competition, you yeah. know. So each week, somebody had to qualify to get through to like the next round and so on. And uh, I kept failing and somebody else would get in and go back another week, somebody else would get in. I kept practicing and practicing, and uh, and eventually after about week eight or week nine, I, I got it. I got through, you know, to like uh, some quarter final or something, and uh, and then I worked on how Sinatra looked as well, you know. Uh, okay, for the for the competition, I'll start. You know, wear a suit and look a bit smarter while I'm doing it because it, it looks better. You know, you get mm -hmm. to sing Sinatra in a t-shirt and a pair of jeans it's not really mm. the thing to do image is everything it would yeah especially in today's world mm. you know i think you know look at instagram facebook if you look the part it yeah. also makes you perform better as I, well I, it? I agree with that yeah and it, it brought a different sort of thing out of me really a bit more confidence not you, almost with you know with the old like hat and all yeah. that kind of jazz and the suit it's like you're creating this persona aren't you yeah. and uh I'm not saying you're hiding behind it, but in a way you're pretending to be somebody you're else. Into character. Well, yeah. that's no different to me. I think on social media, when I'm doing my wacky videos, yeah, like people go, "Oh, that's the Dan." I'm not that wacky all the time. That's not you. It's a character of me. It's part of me and who I am. But yeah, it's not always but me. You don't walk down the street doing that every oh, day. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah, you know, you're like, walking over the road. Oh, it's Phil there. Hi guys. <laughs> yeah. You stand for yourselves. <laughs> you, 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 you're just not there. But it does, I know what you mean. I, I, I totally understand. Is it's yeah. almost like. You're not just going to sing, you're there to perform.